There's a fine line between the sport and the spectacle in F1, and right now it's kind of a bit of a thought I've had. Is F1 maybe prioritizing the spectacle a bit more than the sport? And my thoughts on this video is stemming from the recent Australian Grand Prix, which saw three red flags that led to chaos. Specifically thinking about that second last red flag, also slightly that safety car in Saudi Arabia, and but perhaps more specifically coming from Stefano De Medicali, wanting to seemingly constantly change the weekend format. The red flag thing first, I have nothing against the late race red flag if the other option is finishing under a safety car, because no one wants to see a race end under a safety car. But in reality, did the Magnussen thing need to be a safety car even? Could a VSC have done? Julian Palmer pointed out in his analysis analysis of the whole thing, that Magnussen had stopped by a Marshall's post, in the roughly the same place where a Haas had stopped a few years back with tyre problems and it was covered under yellow flags or something. And then the tyre that flew off of Kevin's car when he'd hit the wall out of turn two, that stopped close to an opening and it could have easily been recovered. So that's kind of got me thinking that maybe a VSC probably could have done the full safety car and then a red flag. It seemed to me like a bit of an overreaction going more for the spectacle type of thing. But I mean, if consistency is what they're going for and all late race incidents that could result in some type of safety car will now always result in a red flag, then that much needs to be told to the teams. So they know to expect, hey, if there's a late race incident, it's probably gonna be a red flag. So we don't end under a safety car. And speaking of safety cars, that Saudi safety car, I said this in my Saudi review, I'll say it again here now. That could have been a VSC. Stroll parked it in a very sensible place, out of the way, not in a dangerous position. It did not need to be a full safety car. I'm kind of thinking they did a full safety car to try and spice things up a bit, but to end up with, they actually killed the spice of the race, if you ask me. Now the weekend format changes, I make it no secret that I do not like the sprint races. And the latest thing is, with the sprint races if you somehow missed it. The thing about having a separate qualifying for the sprint races and the sprint races having no effect on the grid for the main race. This is the new proposed format for the sprint weekends. FP1 on Friday morning, main race qualifying Friday afternoon, sprint race qualifying on Saturday morning, sprint race Saturday afternoon, and then the main race on Sunday. Now don't get me wrong, I am all for trying new things in F1, but if you change things too much too often, people are going to get annoyed, and not just the spectators, but more specifically the teams and drivers. And in fact, Max Verstappen has said he hopes they won't keep changing things, otherwise he won't be around for very long. And there is already a bit of a thought, at least with me, that his current contract that runs out in 2028 could be his last in F1, but could he call it quits sooner if changes keep happening? But while I'm all for trying new things, I will say I'm a bit baffled as to how that's gonna make the weekend more interesting if you ask me it makes the sprint races a bit more redundant and I know some of people might you know some of you might be thinking oh well drivers will risk more in the sprint race now if it won't affect their grid slot for Sunday and yes you do make a good point but will they risk more what if in risking more they crash and in repairing the car the team has to brake park farming that as far as I'm aware of F1 rules braking park farming does affect your grid slot and this is assuming the FIA don't introduce a workaround for that type of situation. And on the specific topic of less practice that's been spoken about in recent weeks, reducing practice could risk some teams and drivers going in totally blind to the main parts of the weekend. If they have problems and can't go in practice, or if whatever crashes and the red flag comes out, or something else happens and the red flag comes out, that means everyone loses time. And I don't a cane about you, but that is just asking for trouble. It would be entertaining to watch, but only up to a point, because it does come to a point where the level of incidents in a race becomes just a bit ridiculous. Like Australia the other week. There is also a factor of pressure on the teams, with a 23 race calendar in this call scap here, that's already pressure on the teams, and adding to that the 6 sprint races and now possibly 6 more qualifyings, that won't help. We need to ease the pressure on teams, not make it worse. If you ask me, the line between sport and spectacle has not been crossed by much, but it has definitely been crossed into the realm of spectacle over sport, if you ask me. We all want to see great action, but I for one do not want that to come at the expense of the sport. So how did they fix this? Well, first off, raise the pull of engine components for the season. 
But that'd be a good start and something they should do regardless of any format changes, if they insist on a 23 race calendar. And as I said, if a late race incident that would result in any type of safety car are now gonna always be red flags, then that much should be communicated with the teams. And if it's a late race red flag, then maybe consider rolling starts instead of standing starts. I will mention though, I do like that they're trying to avoid ending races under safety cars. I think they also need to find stability in the weekend format. They cannot risk limiting practice too much because as I said, that's just asking for trouble. And then as for the sprints, I don't know. I don't like sprints, so I will not go into it, but I don't think a separate quality for it is the answer. What's your thoughts though? Do you think F1 is prioritizing the spectacle over the sport? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.